All right, so I'm back. So, soils. Well, believe it or not, if you take a cubic foot of soil, about half of it is going to be air and water. And that's a healthy, well aerated soil. Should be about half air and water. And the other half is the solid mineral part that we know is soil. There's the physical aspect of soil, there's the chemical, and there's the biological. And we'll talk about that, those properties in that order, saving the best for the last. Okay, so you have sandy soils, you got silt soils and clay soils. Um, and any soil, any mineral soil that, that is, is around is going to be one of those three soils or a mix of those three soils. And that's basically determined by the size of particle in the soil. Sandy soils being large particle soil and uh, the clay soils being the finest size of particles. Let's say you have a 60% sand and a 40% silt soil. Well, that's going to be a sandy loam. A loam just simply means that you've got a mix of either a silt or a sand or a clay. The chemical is your basic pH and nutrient content of your soil. Now, pH is a measure of the acidity of your soil. For vegetables, you want to be around 6 to 6.5. For your minerals, you've got about 20 elements in soil that are important for plant growth. The three most important ones being nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then you've got the trace minerals such as calcium, sulfur, magnesium, boron, iron, and th those are all essential for plant growth. You've got to have all of them. Um, deficiencies are going to cause problems. And, if you want to know what you got in your soil, the best is to do, do a soil analysis, take a sample, send it to a lab, and they'll send you back the uh, chemical makeup of your soil. Now what they won't send you back is the biological makeup of your soil. There's more living creatures in that soil right here in my hand than there are people on this planet. You got the microscopic aspect of it, so you got bacteria, fungi, protozoas, and nematodes. They're all microscopic, you can only see them under a microscope, but they're there in billions. And then you got the larger size that are more visible to the, the human eye, such as your arthropods, your insects, bugs, earthworms, right up through your smaller mammals like voles and, and moles and field mice. They're all part of a soil ecosystem. Now, why is that important for plants and plant production? Well, we all know that plants make energy through photosynthesis. But may, a lot of people might not know that plants are actually releasing f up to 50% of the energy they make through photosynthesis. They're releasing into the ground to attract soil biology. You know, your bacteria, your fungi are all attracted to the root zone and also the leaf zone of the plant. And there's a symbiotic relationship where the, the biology is using the energy that's being released by the plant to make nutrients available for the plant to use for plant growth. So it's, a, it's an important relationship that happens everywhere in plant growth. Um, so that, that would be why the biology is important. And it's, it's harder to test biology to, to, uh, to know what you have. But there are some simple um, in, indicators of healthy soil. Earthworms, if you have a lot of earthworms in your soil, you've you got healthy soil. If you, if you don't see many, you, you should be concerned and, and try to figure out what's wrong with your soil. Maybe an imbalance or your soil is compact or there's too many toxic chemicals in your soil. So that's a good indication you know, of, of healthy soils, earthworms and also other bugs and insects. Let's take a look at some of the bugs and insects that uh, we have here at the, the Woodcrest Farm. What I did was I dug a, a cup into the ground and yesterday and we're going to see what we caught here. I don't know if you can see but we got an earthworm in there, a slug, a ground beetle, a spider. It looks like a wolf spider. We got a uh, wire worm and then we got some smaller quarter inch long bugs that I can't identify and then we got a hundred or so tiny insects moving around red and brown and black. Um, less than a millimeter long. Now, 
I will say that some of these critters are pests. The wireworm is a pest. The slug is a pest. The spider is not. Spiders are, are, are um, predators of insect pests. So there's, you know, there's a whole food, food web of you know, who's eating who. But there you have it, soil biology, it's there.